Today will be a day to remember for the rest of your life. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is excited to present the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. With over 100 Hall of Famers participating, we have reached 47 states and countries all over the world, sharing the message that football is more than a game and can teach Americans important life values like commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. But you have to make right decisions even when nobody's watching you. Well, respect is not just given out. It's not handed out like a, like a, like a brochure. It's earned. Today, you are presented with an opportunity to meet and learn from one of the greatest football players of all time. But more important than that, the chance to see that their Hall of Fame life wasn't given to them. They didn't roll out the bed great. They put the work in, on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, in their communities. They made themselves a Hall of Famer on and off the field. Your feet can't take you where your mind's never been. Because you can make it, but it's just gonna take a little hard work, and some effort, and the drive and determination. And today, you will learn you can do the same thing they did. You don't have to have a gold jacket or a bronze bus to make a difference in the lives of others. It's your decision whether you want to be a successful student, son, daughter, brother, or sister. If attitudes are contagious, is your attitude worth catching? It's integrity as well because when you decide to pursue something and you don't quit, that says a lot about you. Commitment to excellence. We can all aspire to be the best. Welcome to a once in a lifetime program, the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. Zach Thomas, you were only in your second season in the NFL when I got to Miami, but you were already the leader of our defense. Nobody prepared harder than you. You refused to be outworked. You, became, you quickly became one of my best friends. And I thank you for all your leadership and your guidance in the way you approach the game. Zach Thomas was my nemesis. My first year with the Jets before the first game we each played against each other, Bill Parcells told me in front of my entire team, if you don't block Thomas, we won't win the game. And for the next 16 matches, I never forgot that. Zach was one of, not the smartest player I ever faced. He loved the game, had fun when he played, and he brought the best out of me. When people ask me who's not in the Hall of Fame, and that I think should be, it's an easy one for me, number 54 from the Miami Dolphins. Zach Thomas, welcome to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, class of 2023. <laughs> so proud of you. Proud of you. Thank you, Coach. Zach, you're in the Hall of Fame forever and ever. Yes. You'll have your legacy for all time for people to look at and say, hey, he was a great one. There are not many in there. It's an exclusive group. And uh, it's a special feeling for all of us to have you in there. All right. And with that, I would like to welcome everybody here to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, for another edition of the Heart of a Hall of Famer series connected by Extreme Networks, featuring one of our newest Hall of Famers, member of the class of 2023, Mr. Zach Thomas. My name is Nathan Martin. I'm the Youth and Education Coordinator here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'll be guiding our discussion throughout the morning, and I appreciate everybody who's tuning in to be a part of the program. But before we get into the program itself, a little bit about uh, who we are here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, here at the Hall of Fame, our mission is to honor the greatest of the game, to promote its history, or to promote its values, to preserve its history, and to celebrate excellence together. The values that we promote here at the Hall of Fame are, are things like commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. Now, personally, I'm excited, and hopefully you guys are too, to hear how these values have impacted Mr. Thomas both on and off the football field. But before we get to that, the questions and answers that I'm sure that you guys uh, have prepared as far as the questions go, 
Uh, I have a couple of housekeeping notes that we need to address before we get rolling. And, and number one is, if you're watching this program live on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Um, feel free to insert your questions uh, into the chat. If you're watching from a school, let us know where you're watching it from. We would love to make that a part of the program. Uh, so let us know that you're watching. Uh, if you're one of our schools that per is participating or you are watching on YouTube, uh, go ahead and share that. Put it out there on your social channels. Uh, make sure that you tag at ProFootballHOF. Use the uh, hashtag HOF values, and hopefully we can get that reshared uh, from your account as well. As far as my thank yous go uh, within this housekeeping uh, portion here, I want to thank first and foremost uh, the teachers and the administrators that have uh, seen the value to this program, see the value in character education and, and what this program has to offer and them opening up their classrooms so that we can uh, have this discussion with their students. I wanna thank the students because really without them, there is no program. Their, their questions will drive the program. I have a list of questions that I'm prepared to ask uh, Zach myself, but I'm sure that he would rather hear from you uh, and, and he wants to impact you guys. So please come ready with your questions. We're excited to hear what you have. I also want to thank Extreme Networks, uh, great partners of ours here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to host another one of these amazing programs, uh, the Heart of the Hall of Famer uh, series. So thank you to our partners at Extreme Networks. Um, and, and with that, I, I'm honored and, and truly excited to introduce to you guys uh, one of the greatest players to ever play the game of football, uh, 13 seasons in the National Football League, the 1996 AFC Rookie of the Year, a seven-time Pro Bowler, a five-time All-Pro, a member of the 2000s All-Decade Team, and his newest accomplishment, a member of the Class of 2023. Uh, please welcome Mr. Zach Thomas to the program. Hey, Nathan, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you, Zach. Uh, thanks again for being a part of the program. We're excited to have you uh, with us. Uh, really, your your first uh, appearance since you've been a part of the, the class of 2023 with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Yes, sir. And hey, I love the video. And I love that intro by you. That's That was good. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I'm sure it, it, it's got to make you feel good to kind of see, you know, former teammate Jason Taylor, uh, now teammate Kevin Mawai, you know, fellow Pro Football Hall of Famer, kind of talking about the importance that you played uh, in their career and the way that you were able to motivate and, and lead them in different ways. Um, but our first question for you, and, and we start every program really with this, is related to our Hall of Fame values. And I mentioned those at the beginning, commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. And, you know, was there one of those that you really just felt like you connected to more than maybe the others? They're all important. We know that. But was there one that you really connected to throughout your career? For sure. It was uh, just like you were talking about with uh, Jason Taylor talking about respect. Um, respect would be probably number one for me. Uh, getting Earning the respect of your teammates. Uh, but then with integrity, character, and all that, I feel like I'll say this about character. You know, we're talking to students. I remember those days a long time ago. Um, being in middle school, being in high school, and I was motivated by a lot of different things back then. And, and they're all good. All motivation, you know, is good. You know, one, I was motivated by the popularity, the fame that it brings. But now that I look back at it, that phase over time, you know, and, and you know, I was motivated by the awards, the uh, accolades. When you think that's most important, but now that I look back at it, I don't, I can't recall the awards and, and, uh, and, but what I do recall and I'll never forget is every one of my teammates and every classmate. And this is the most important thing here is especially if they're a good classmate or not. And that's, what's most important, your character. Cause that, that you will never forget how a person makes you feel. You'll never forget if they're a great leader, you'll never forget the good energy they bring. If they're teachable, uh, if they're encouraging, those are things you never forget. You might forget names. I forget some, some people's names. I will not forget their face and I will not ever forget 
if they were a great classmate or teammate and all. And, um, but then there's that other guy or girl that you'll never forget too, that weren't such a great classmate. And they're usually all about themselves. They act like the victim, um, negative complaining all the time. My, my message to these students is don't be that person. You know, you're going to have your bad days. Don't be that person because in life, it doesn't matter. Even if you become successful or you're a hall of famer, if nobody respects you, if you got, you got to have good character, all those values for them to respect you. And that's what they will remember it for life. It doesn't matter how much money you got. Um, if, if you're just not a good person and that's why character you got to have all these five values that you just mentioned, Nathan. I think that's number one. But character to me is is first priority. No doubt. And I appreciate really your vulnerability already with telling the students that maybe early on when you were their age, middle school, high school, your motivation wasn't as, let's say, as pure as it could have been. You were chasing the accolades. You were chasing the awards. Um, but I love how through the years you kind of, seen the importance of character and really I like to emphasize and tell the students when you take our hall of fame values commitment integrity courage respect and honesty if you can have all of those working in your life that's having good character and I think that's kind of what you're talking about uh Zach and and I want to really ask you you know specifically how did the game of football I mean, you're one of the greatest. You're one of 371 Pro Football Hall of Famers. How did the game of football teach you these character traits? Well, to to play 28 years, Nathan, I mean, you have to figure it out and 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 have some of these traits because you can't, you know, they say, you know, talent gets you to the top, but your character is what keeps you there. Mm. That is so important um, because, you know, I couldn't have kept going at a consistent level if I didn't have the right values. And I feel like number one on just being a Hall of Famer, I would say number one is all these values you just mentioned, but I was obsessed. So obsessed with football and that has something to do with commitment. That's why I was committed. Right. Um I had a work ethic. Uh, you got to work hard. Anything in life, if it's uh, if it's great, you got to work hard at it. But if you have a work ethic, but you don't have any discipline, discipline is so important. And that's one thing that I did have was discipline. Even when I was in the NFL, I had an alarm clock to wake me up in the morning and one when to go to bed. Mm. And it was discipline. And I got a lot of hours of sleep. And you know why? Because I knew the next day, um, that's when you win with your prep, that if I felt fresh, I would be more sharp, more focused. Even today for classmates, if you're trying to get something out of this, you're not going to get much out of it if you didn't get a good night's sleep. You're not getting everything out of it. And so that, to me, was a lot that was overlooked and underappreciated. And that was number one. It was a boring lifestyle, but uh, it wasn't boring, you know, now that I'm being a Hall of Famer because of it. And I really believe that discipline you got to have. Um, another thing that that really helped me in, I'm not saying it's values, but you just can't be afraid to fail. That is one thing that, uh, you know, that I was very good at. You know, I kept having to reboot my mindset to keep it strong. Because, yeah, you're going to have failure in, uh, in everything in life. And, uh, you know, I was a leading tackler a lot of the years in the NFL. But I also was, I led a few years, too, on uh, leading missed tackles. So, mm. you know, I could have got discouraged, you know, and all that would have snowballed. But you can't be afraid to fail. You'll never be popping the champagne or celebrating ever if you're afraid to fail. I feel like that's a good quality that I had. So two things you said that really jumped out to me. Um, first, you talk about not being afraid to fail. I think so often I'll lump myself into the, the younger generation. I like to still think that I'm young, 
with our students, you know, like we got so much too cool, you know, everyone's too cool, you know, and, and we're afraid to fail. So you do things that make you comfortable. Um, and, and I think what you're talking about, you put yourself in uncomfortable situations so that you could reap the benefits um, later on and be the leading tackler and, and make these pro bowls and all pro teams and whatnot. And, and then, and you talk about the discipline. That's what also jumped out as far as you were doing things that no one else wanted to do. And now you're getting to reap the benefits and the rewards that no one else is getting to reap, right? Not everyone can say they're a pro football hall of famer. I think those are things our students, whether they play sports or not, like if you want to be great at playing the piano, then you got to practice like nobody else is practicing so that you can be great and enjoy that down the line. And it can apply in so many different areas of life. So I love that you highlighted that. And, and I got one more and then we'll get to our student questions. Um, so many of our Hall of Famers, they talk about uh, the people that influence them. Was there somebody in your life, a, a parent, a coach, a teammate that you can really just point back to and be like, they really influenced my character. They're a reason why I had the discipline that I had. Who were those people that were kind of pouring into you, Dak, throughout your, your life and your career? Number one would be my parents. And, you know, they both uh, were, came from a rough background and, and they both became successful. Um, I definitely asked a lot of questions uh, and definitely was constantly watching them. My dad, nobody outworked my dad, same with my mom and how she treated people. Uh, it was a trickle down effect and uh, it's just something I knew and I felt like, you know, that was, they were great examples for me. I'm very blessed to have that. Not everybody has that. Um, but for you students, even if it's your parents or it'd be a teacher, it could be anybody, ask a ton of questions. And that's when you learn. Like when I came to the NFL, I was a rookie and I followed a guy named Trace Armstrong. And, you know, my dad always told me, man, hey, follow around, put yourself around good people because he said you're an average of your top five friends. And so I always put myself around guys that had the same interests as me that were motivated, very positive, encouraging. And Trace Armstrong was one of those guys. He was a seven year vet when I came in the NFL. Um, they nicknamed me the baby elephant because I was always connected to his hip. You know, uh, <laughs> I did everything that he did from, his stretch therapist to massage to hyperbaric chamber took care of myself. Um, and, and you know what successful people leave clues. And then he definitely is the reason I'm sitting here today talking about the hall of fame is because, uh, I, uh, definitely, he taught me how to be a true pro. And then eventually I was that guy to younger guys and you can pass that, um, on to those guys and that that's that's a good feeling as well yeah i like that you're able to kind of see both both sides of it you're able to highlight and give flowers to the people that influenced you but then you were able to then give back to others later and i think that's a great lesson for our students um as well you know find people that are older than you that can have a positive influence but you know regardless of the age i mean you could be a fifth grade student right here well there's first graders that look up to you Right. So what are, what kind of influence are you having on those first graders the same way that maybe you look up to a high school student um, and, and we talk about our students. I want to go to them. So our first school we're going to go to for a question. Uh, North Ridgeville uh, here in Ohio, uh, Northeast Ohio. If you guys want to go ahead and have a student step up to the camera, unmute your mic and, and uh, ask your question to Mr. Thomas. My name's Owen and I'm going to ask you. How did it feel when you set the Miami Dolphins record with your fourth career interception return touchdown? Hey, great question. Um, it felt good. Uh, you know, I really, uh, when it comes to stats and all that, that's, that's one thing that, you know, I was motivated at the time, but it's so much more of just earning the respect of your teammates, like I said earlier, um, but it's always good to set a record, especially being a, a defensive linebacker. I uh, wasn't a cornerback or a, a safety. So uh, 
to do that. Hey, that, that record's going to get broken. I think it's already been tied, but back at the time, uh, you know, I always, when I came in to college, I was, I was a recruited as a fullback. And so I always loved touchdowns. And so it meant something to me to be on defense uh, and, and score a touchdown. But, but real quick, uh, I'll say this is when I went to college as a fullback, I, uh, Bam Morris was a fullback as a sophomore. And so that's the reason I moved to linebacker. And how wild is that? If I stayed at fullback, I probably wouldn't be here today. Mm. And it's only because of a guy named Bam Morris who went on to the NFL played many years. He was so good. I said, man, I want to play. So I went to the defensive side and you get a little lucky and that's where I got lucky. I like that story too, of going into college and you're going in as an offensive player, but it's got to take a little bit of humility to kind of step back and be like, you know what, I'll do what's best for the team. It worked out for you. It ended up being best for you moving to defense, but you wanted to be on the field. You knew you could add value. So you said, I'll play defense, even if I don't get to score quite as many touchdowns as I probably would have scored playing fullback. Um, let's go to our next school. We're going to go to a village elementary up in New York um, for one of their student questions. If you guys want to have someone uh, step up to the camera again and go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Hi, Mr. Thomas. Thanks for meeting our fifth graders today in New York. Yes. All right. I love the hat. Yeah, I'm a huge Dolphins fan, so. Hey, good. You're smart. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big um, fan, too. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. So what was the hardest game of your career, and how did you come back from it? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, you know, that's a that's a great question. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, earlier in this uh, video, you had a guy named Kevin Mawai. I feel like and he was a New York Jet. You know, you being up there in New York, you know those Jet fans. But he, in my, I'm thinking it was my fourth or fifth year, we went to New York and we started 3-0. and And I had a rough game, very rough game. And a lot of it had to do with Kevin Mawai. He, you know, he, he was a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. And so he got the best of me. Um, it, you know, and it, it taught me to never really get too comfortable. And to really, you got to make yourself a little uncomfortable to get the best out of yourself because comforts, everything in comforts easy, you know? And so for me, after that, I just learned like, Hey man, you got to go into every game like it's your last. And, uh, but I definitely with adversity, you know, the ride is not going to be smooth ever. If you're trying to be successful or get to the top, it's never going to be smooth, but, what do you have to believe in yourself? That's it. Believe in yourself. It doesn't matter how many doubters you have in life. I got doubted my whole life. Look at, I mean, you can't tell, but I might look big here. I'm sitting down. I'm not real big. I wasn't real fast and I wasn't really that smart, but you know, I found a way and I bet on myself and the only people that really didn't doubt me was my family because they saw all the work that I put in at home and how much I love the game. But everybody, you know, doubted me from every level, from high school to college to pro. Um, but there's no doubt me now being a Hall of Famer, you know. And so i um, very proud of that, that I had a lot of uh, obstacles that you can't af let affect you. Just like we were talking about earlier, not being afraid to fail. Um, you're going to have failure you know, especially if you're going to, you know, do it for a long time. So uh, don't be afraid to fail. It's like any sport, you know, from basketball, the, the best players are always the Le LeBron James, the Kobe Bryant's, the, you know, Michael Jordan's are the ones that always take that last shot, but they miss more than they make, but they don't hesitate to keep shooting. So in life, whatever you love, just keep shooting. Yeah, that's Good great question. advice. For, that's great advice. Great motivation for our students to really. It, it's it's kind of cheesy, but they used to say that you know my haters are my motivators. People that are motivating you, people that don't believe in you, and, and it kind of puts that chip on your shoulder, right? And and it motivates you to keep working hard. So hopefully our students can can kind of see that from your story and your journey and how you kind of seem to have that little bit of a chip where people didn't believe in you and think that you were big enough, fast enough, 
or maybe even smart enough and, and you wanted to prove them wrong. And that's what you did. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Kevin Mawai again, and I think this is, is fitting, you know, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, at our core, we we are a museum. Um, pe- people come here from all around the world uh, daily to, to see it, their favorite players, to see their favorite moments from football history. Um, and we're lucky enough, we're going to go live inside the museum to really my favorite part of the museum. I think it's probably a lot of people's favorite part of the museum, the, the Hall of Fame gallery. So we're going to go live to Jerry Shockey. He's the director of youth and education. Um, and he, he's got a little bit for us uh, coming from inside the museum. So, Jerry, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay, Nathan? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Uh, so thank you, students, for tuning in here today. Again, my name is Jerry Shockey. I'm the director of youth and education here at the Pro Football Fame. Excited for all the students to connect in here today. Uh, some, some familiar faces in Hilton, New York. Uh, my good friend, Amory there. Uh, so thank you for connecting in, my friends at Northridge. So a lot of great, great classrooms here today that uh, uh, enjoy having you guys uh, tune in here today. And great questions so far. So appreciate it. We're going to keep those rolling here as well. Uh, Zach, thank you for uh, for being here today uh, and, and doing this. Um, you know, this is 17 times a year we do this. We're able to connect our, our guys out to just give life lessons and advice to help kids take the next step in their life. And so uh, it's pretty special for us to be able to use an education department to be able to do this on a regular basis and create this kind of opportunity for students all across the country. And so I'm in a pretty special place right now. So I want to give, I want to give students a, a perspective on when you're talking about, you're talking to a hall of famer today. Okay. Think about this just for a second. Since the game of football started, there have been roughly about 300 million that have played it at all levels. Okay, throughout its history. Take that a step further. At, at, at the college level, there have been roughly about 5 million that have played the game of football. Take that the next step into the NFL, there have been about 29,000 uh, people that have been paid to, play, uh, paid to play, coach, or officiate, or administrate the game of football. To think about that, there are only 371 members of the Pro Football of Fame. So that gives you an idea of just how difficult it is to make it in the NFL and or in the Pro Football of Fame and, and, and what big of an honor it is. And so I want to show you guys. We're going to take a quick tour. I'm going to flip this camera around here. We're actually kind of busy here today, which is kind of cool as well. So let me, uh, let me flip this around. We're going to take a little tour real quick. So you see some of the back to Jim Thorpe days, 1963. We can go all the way around. You probably saw Paul Brown real quick. Students are like, who is Paul Brown? But that's okay. But I want to come to this. Okay, so we've got the class of 2022 right here. And you can see that there, the class of 2022. And so what does that mean? And then right next to it, right here, is going to be the class of 2023. And so let me, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to flip my camera back around because I'm going to ask a question here. And so let me, let me ask this back. Okay, so now you're going through the process right now. We did size, you know, this, uh, measurements for the jacket, the ring. Uh, the bus, you're going through that process right now. I think you're talking probably with Blair. I've been here for 23 years, so I know I know Blair you know, pretty well. He's been doing it for a long time for us. So uh, you're going through that process. Probably you're going to be going out to see him soon to, to do everything that it, it, to do everything to get that bus as lifelike as possible. And so, um, and students, if you if you ever get a chance, check out ESPN uh, e, E60. There's one on Randy Moss and his bronze bus, and the whole process is called Lost Wax Casting the whole process to make these bronze busts. But my first question to you, Zach, is smile, no smile? You know, what's going to be the look of that bronze bust? Where are you not you're undecided yet? No, I, I, uh, I, I feel like, Jerry, I'm going to – I got to have that intense look, man. And that's the way I had to play. I was small, that intense. But I, I think we might have a problem, man. I mean, you see – the size of my head, there might not be enough room on that wall behind you, you know, uh, and I know I, I didn't break any measurements. Uh, you know, I know Jonathan Ogden, uh, he, he's got a pretty big, uh, head himself, but he has the body to fit for it. But, uh, but yeah, but Blair's, uh, he's, he's going to get started with it, but I haven't told him, I don't know if I want to smile. I don't want to be the nice guy. I want to just be like I was on the football field and, and, uh, couldn't, I couldn't play nice on the football field. <laughs> well, J.O. did have a little bit of a throw, too, so we had to fit that in there. And, and, and I think yeah. if you look at the video, Randy Moss asked Blair if he could do the throw, the full throw that he had back in the day. Oh, wow. And so they, just, they decided to do the cornrows and bun it up in the back. So, uh, okay. uh, But I, the next question I have for you about the bus, because I know you're 
for, you know, I know you're a man of faith, and, and you know, put this in this in this grand scheme of your life, though. Uh, you know, accolades and honors are great, uh, but what do you do with something like this? You know, how do you stay humble with all the accolades and the honors and those kind of things? You know, how do you put this in perspective and say that you know this is a, an amazing honor? You know, obviously that few get, but then also still stay humble uh, with that being said. Uh, you know that's just how I've been raised. You know, I feel like, uh, that's the reason I got the best out of myself because along the journey, you had to stay humble. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, awards don't make you as the person, as I mentioned earlier in my talk, um, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're the guy that's all oh, look at me and all that, and, and it's all about me all the time, nobody respects you. And I've never been that way. That's not my character. And I feel like just because I got a certain award, I rode the backs of so many other guys to get there. So you don't do it all by yourself. I wasn't self-made. And so I'm very grateful for everybody along the way. And to even get to this point, you can't do it by yourself. You just can't. And so for me to, uh, I don't know if you get would we'll say it would be arrogant or anything like that. That's just not me. Um, but to stay humble, I'm, I'm always humble because I, you know, I, I'm very grateful for how everything played out. Um, but again, that's just not me. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, and, and just the game itself teaches you that that's what's so unique about the game of football compared to any other sport is that you've got 11 guys that have to execute and if one person doesn't do that they, you know you're so dependent on so many people and that's why we love the game of football here is, uh is it, it there's no other game that's like it where where you're so dependent on each other so um soon thank you uh, we'll, we'll keep sending them out to you guys zach thank you for the responses and uh, nathan i'm going to send it back to you thank yeah, you jerry thank you, yeah thank you jerry for that live look in um, hopefully it was cool for our students. Hopefully it was cool for you, Zach, to kind of see where that bronze bust will will, will sit um, and, and the teammates that you'll have forever now uh, in there in that Hall of Fame gallery. But I want to send it to another one of our interactive schools, uh, Laurel Party Elementary. So go ahead, have your student uh, stand up, uh, get close to the camera, ready to ask their question. And I want to encourage, I know we have other uh, schools that are watching on YouTube um, that are in Zoom as an attendee. Go ahead and use the chat function, use the, the Q&A function. If you guys have questions, we want to get those inserted throughout the program. But for now, we're going to go to Laurel Party um, for their question. So if you guys have someone step up um, and, and ask their question for uh, Mr. Thomas. Hello, my name is Messiah. And um, my question is, where was your first uh, football game? My very first football game? Woo. That's many years ago. So I started when I was eight years old and that was a team called the Mean Machine. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be in White Deer, Texas, you know, a little small town. And uh, and that's where it all started. I knew from the beginning, I just loved to run around and hit people. And uh, and that's when I started to love the game. So I want to follow up there, Zach, you you play that first football game, you're, you're a young kid in Texas. When does college football, pro football, the pro football hall of fame, when does that enter your radar as like, this is possible for me. This is a, a an achievable goal. Um, kind of all three of those levels, college, the pros, and then the hall of fame. When did you think about those throughout your career? I was, I was always in the moment. And so I never really thought too far ahead. I was always at my feet because it was just to get the best out of myself at the moment. And so if I was on me machine, I was trying to be the best on the team. And if I was in high school, I was trying to be the best because it takes hard work and it's a process. And if you go look too far out, it looks unachievable and you get discouraged. And that's one thing that I never wanted. You know, a lot of kids, you know, it's such a, uh, far away goal that they they get discouraged and good things take time so for me I just stay focused at the moment just try to be the best I could and then once I got to you know senior in high school I, I have a shot you know I was all state and I'm like I got a shot at college and then same thing when I was in uh, college you know junior senior year started making plays being all American I said you think I got a shot to 
play pro. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm a pro football hall of famer. You know, I mean, I never thought even playing in the pros that I would even have a shot at the hall of fame. So you got to be in the moment to get the best out of your, your, yourself. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's pretty much what I did. So talk about being in the moment, a, a popular question we'd love to ask during this program. Um, and I'm going to throw out a couple of uh, possible answers for you, but you tell me if I'm wrong here. We love to ask, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Now, I was doing some research before the program, and I noticed your first career tackle is on Hall of Fame running back Curtis Martin. Your first career interception was Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly, who you picked off. So was it one of those moments or was it something else in training camp? What was that welcome to the NFL moment for Zach Thomas? Uh, it was that first game versus Curtis Martin. Uh, the very first NFL football game, I even remember the national anthem beforehand. And I knew even before I stepped on that field that I wasn't going to take it for granted. And uh, going out there and playing against Drew Bledsoe, Curtis Martin. And then I had a hit in that game uh, against Sean Jefferson. It was a really good hit that pretty much says, hey, who is this guy? Who is this 54? And and uh, that was my welcome to the NFL moment right there. And and uh, I definitely, I know that game because I had laser focus. Uh, it was all because I was just so grateful to even make it to the NFL. Because like uh, we were talked about earlier, it was hard. It's hard to make it. I think Jerry was talking about all the, the, the stats on it. And it's one-tenth of 1% make it to the NFL and then the NFL, I mean, it stands for not for long, uh, you know, not national football league. Uh, it's, it's not a long career. It's two to three years is the average. And so for me to play 13, um, but back to your whole thing of the welcome to the NFL, that moment right there, probably the hit on Sean Jefferson for me. First so, game of my career. So I, I love that memory and I, I love how it's different for, for everybody. Um, but we got a, a good YouTube question. I want to get that involved here. And it's kind of similar to one that we well, we like to ask as well. Um, this is from Chris Peterson in Warland, uh, Wyoming. Uh, what are some situations or events that took place in your life, Zach, that you would say had a significant impact on your character? Maybe moments where your character was even tested. Um, and, and how did you hold true to the man of character that you are? This might not now an event, Nathan. This might not pertain to what your question is, but I'll say an event that that shaped me. Mm -hmm. I got ran over by a truck when I was two and a half years old, man. Mm. And and uh, not once, but twice. And I got knocked out. Had tire tracks down the middle of me. And uh, you know what saved my life? It was dirt. If it was on concrete, I wouldn't be talking to you today or on pavement. And so for me, that right there, that's the reason I, and I'll get to it, the established a work ethic because I used to work countless hours because I had a learning disorder and I got, I didn't even, you know, I got held back before I even got to school because of it. And uh, so I worked countless hours with my mom, countless hours. And I feel like that established a habit of just work, 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 just so I could fit in in class, not be embarrassed. And this is even before kindergarten. And I did so many hours and uh, I feel like that established that event right there shaped me for the better. And that's all I've ever known is my whole career was work and prepare before you know, the, the same preparation I did with my mom before I got into the classroom. And you know what? It's crazy. I got all A's, you know, and I was the slow learner. But it was a choice that I made that I had to put in the, the extra time outside the classroom to get the best out of myself. And I know it didn't pertain to your question, but it, it it's a bit that really shaped me. And I'm very grateful for, I mean, even be able to survive, you know, and my dad mentioned it. He always knew I was going to be a football player when I survived that pickup truck running me over. But, uh, but yeah, that's a, uh, that's a uh, pretty much uh, a event that definitely uh, uh, impacted me. I actually, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Hopefully 
you know, I'm thinking about there might be students that that connects with where they've had to work harder to try to fit in. They've had to work harder to get the good grades and hearing that from you and how, you know, you had that event um, where you very well could have lost your life, but you were able to fight through and overcome that just as a, a little toddler and your parents supported you and helped you and got you ready for school and helped you get caught up. Um, you know, that might relate to one of our students. Thank you for sharing that. That's a powerful story and part of your testimony and who you are as a man. Um, next question I have for you, I, I got to ask, you know, you grew up in Texas. I mean, there's been movies and TV shows made like high school football in Texas. They just talk about how it's different. And I, I'm in Northeast Ohio. We like to brag about the high school football that we have up here. I know Florida likes to brag about their high school football. California, I mean, but Texas high school football, they say is different. So can you talk about that? You won a state championship. What was your high school football experience like in Texas? It was awesome. It, it's pretty much, uh, I feel like I was from a small town and in, my freshman year, I started for a varsity team in White Deer, Texas. And my brother and the senior class there were really good. Um, and we went all the way to state in one state when we were pretty much outmatched. And uh, But it was a lot of unselfish guys that got the best out of each other. And that taught me. And I even started on that team at, at defense. And I was playing nose guard. <laughs> Whatever ways to get on the field. But that was probably the best experience I had. And, and in high school football in Texas, I mean, especially the small towns, when you travel, everybody travels. And it's always the talk of the town. And you even see the stadiums out there. I mean, there's some college-looking high school stadiums. And, you know, it's uh, it definitely uh, brings the community together. And uh, I loved every bit of it. But like you said, it's everything it's uh, set out to be. Uh, just like the movies, uh, it was such a great part of my life that that molded me into the player that I am because of, you know, how much uh, it meant to everybody in the community, too, on, you know, winning and if you lost. It, it brought everybody together to accomplish one goal, and that was just, you know, to win. I got a couple other questions I want to ask that are pertain to your football career and Obviously, there's character values entrenched throughout the entire thing. Um, but no, no, you said nose guard. You were playing nose guard. I was quick. I was beat. I was beating the, the center off the, off the spot, man. I know. I, I just wanted to get on the field. Whatever so, it uh, takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Well, here's something that uh, a former uh, opponent of yours, now teammate, Hall of Famer Peyton Manning once said. And the students might think this is cool. I feel like, you know, they might not always know who these other Hall of Famers, but Peyton's out there. They see Peyton Manning on the yeah. commercials and everything. So our students know who Peyton Manning is. He said, and this is what he said about you, the most unnerving thing about playing Miami is Zach Thomas calling out all of your plays. He caused the most problems for me of any player that I ever faced. So, Zach, hearing something like that from a player with the stature that Peyton Manning has – you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. Um, he's known for being up there, calling audibles, changing the play, Omaha, you know, shouting that out. What does that mean to you? Knowing he's like, Zach Thomas was doing that to me. He's calling out all my plays. Um, what does that mean hearing that? Uh, it's, it's respect, especially when you can get it from an opponent, especially from a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, I feel like, you know, the thing about Peyton, he won before he got on the field too. He was one of those players that did a lot of preparation. And it's just like, you know, I'm telling the students, when you take a test, if you really prepare for it, if it's days, weeks, whatever, you're ready to take it. You're not nervous to take that test, but what if you don't, mm -hmm. you know, then, then you're, you have anxiety. And so I was never nervous on game day. I was nervous during the week when I was going through my preparation and all that, but preparation is what builds your confidence. And you know what? That's why we're talking about Peyton Manning here. The reason he was the player he was, was because of his preparation as well. And that's when you win, you got to do it now. It's a small window of sacrifice that you have uh, that, you know, 
that can be a lifetime of, of pride and, 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 uh, you know, excitement. If, if you do put in the hard work now, um, and, and you can eventually one day be whatever you want to be, but you know, so. I think that's definitely something our students can relate to. I love how you connected that to them taking a quiz or a test, like prepare, prepare. And when you prepare and you study and you do your research and your homework, like when you get to the test, which for you, that was the game you're going up against Peyton Manning, when you get to the test, you don't have to be nervous or scared about what's going to happen because you've put in the work. Um, so that's a great correlation and connection for our students. Um, another kind of story that I found that I, I just felt like I had to bring up here was former teammate of yours, Larry Izzo. And it sounded like you guys maybe roomed together for a while. He, he loved to highlight your attention to detail. You know, we'll talk about watching film and preparation. Um, and he said he watched so much film. Um, and he's always eating Cheetos. You were always eating Cheetos when you watched the film. Um, <laughs> so when did you really learn, like, for Zach Thomas to be successful, I can't just bank on my natural God-given abilities and talents. I've got to do the homework. i got to do the research. i got to watch the film. When did you learn how to watch film and pull from it? What would uh, help you out on the field? It, you know what? It, it really started in college. I had a coach, uh, John Goodner, that taught me how to watch film. And uh, and then as for that Cheetos diet, no, man, that's not – that was a college diet. And once you got to the NFL, you had to figure it out. You can't eat Cheetos every day. Just not happening. And you're not going to last if you do. Um, but I, I, I will know this is that it could be just watching film and you got to learn it. You can watch film and not learn anything from it but it's, you got to understand it. And the one thing when I got good at it, especially it wasn't early on in my career, but pre-snap, that's what I was good at because, you know, when they broke the huddle, there's so many tails that would help me line up one inch here, one inch there, one inch front, one inch back to help me win down that play. It's just one inch. And that got me labeled a smart player just off from my tape. You know, and was I that smart? I don't know if I was ever that smart, but it's just, I got labeled instinctive, smart player because of all that prep. But that prep was just a choice of mine, Nathan. That's mm -hmm. it. It's a choice that you make and how much you want to put in. You know, don't follow everybody else. You know, it's not going to be easy either. So it wasn't easy spending countless hours, you know, watching film, but it sure made it a lot easier when I was in the game. No doubt, no doubt. And when you say it's a choice, I hope our students hear that, you know, they can choose. Are they going to prepare? Are they going to practice so that they can be successful and have uh, the same joy and excitement uh, of winning? Winning is more fun than losing, right? But it takes that preparation to, to do that, and it's a choice of theirs. Um, I do want to go back to our students. We still got um, – Village Elementary connected in. So uh, if you guys want to have another student come up uh, to the camera and unmute your mic, we'll get a question from you guys there up at Village Elementary in New York. Uh, so go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question there when you're ready. One of them asked about concussion. Okay, go ahead. Tell them who you are. Hello, I'm Eric Reed from Village Elementary. You already know that. Um, what was the most memorable game you've ever had? Great question, Eric. Um, most memorable game. Whew. I would say going all the way back to the high school as a freshman and winning state, the state championship, because it was such a high that we were the underdog going in. And like I said earlier, the senior class was really good and unselfish. And I don't know how we won that game, but we did it on a swinging gate. It was a trick play at the end of the game. And you know, we won and the whole, all the crowd stormed the field. It was a great moment. And I feel like that motivated me to try to get that moment again. So hard to get that moment. But, uh, but back to, I want to say one thing about choices, you know, that me and Nathan were talking about. And you choose on how great you want to be. You, yourself, Eric, it's not your parents. It's not your teacher that 
find out what you want to be. It's you. You find out what you want to do. And you just got to be good at one thing in life. But it's up to you to find that out. But you can choose along the way how great you want to be. It might take hard work, but it's going to take commitment, just like we're talking about. Uh, but you can choose to be a leader, too. It's just a choice. But if you're a leader, you got to be committed. You got to be honest. You got to have integrity. You got to have all these values. OK, man. So choose to be great, man. But you can be great at anything you want. But it's up to you to find out. OK, man. Good question. Yeah, that was a great question. And actually, Eric stole the question that uh, Smith Magnet Elementary had just put in the chat. So I can't really ask their question. They asked your favorite game memory. And you kind of already told us there from your, your high school state championship. So let's jump back over to uh, North Ridgeville and see if they have another student with a question. Um, again, just step up to the camera and uh, unmute yourself and ask your question for uh, for Mr. Thomas. Hello, my name is Yusin and I'm from the NRIC. I just wanted to know, did you ever feel like you were going to give up whenever you lost the game? Another great question. You know what? Uh, you know, after a loss, my preparation the following week was even more focused because I never liked that feeling. And I never wanted to give up. I, I definitely, I, I could, I would still be playing today if it wasn't for my body not holding up, you know? And so I love the game so much. I didn't care. It comes along with losses and, but it would really get me motivated in the coming weeks because I'd be so like preparing so hard. Cause I didn't like that feeling of losing. Nobody likes to lose, but if you love something, man, stick with it because Hey, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, how, how old you are, you know, if you're 13, 14, 15, 16, man, you're young, man. You need to take risk. You're going to lose. But if you're afraid to lose and just sitting back, you're never going to be successful at anything because you're, you're protecting yourself. So take a lot of risk, man. And uh, don't be afraid to lose. All right. Good question. though. that was a great question. I feel like the students today, have had some amazing thought provoking questions. So credit to them, their teachers, preparing their students. It's been, it's been a great discussion. Um, just a couple more things and then we'll wrap up because I know we're getting close to um, our hour here. Um, can you tell us, you know, Zach, everyone kind of remembers you number 54 with the Miami Dolphins, but you did play one year at the end of your career with Dallas. Um, and I was checking the years there. You overlapped with DeMarcus Ware who oh, yeah. is going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2023 with you. Um, what was that like playing with him and probably coming in and you're you're the vet, you're the old guy in the linebacker room, right? You're supposed to be kind of mentoring these guys, but also adding value on the field. What was that experience like? And then now you guys, I mean, you're connected forever. You're a part of the class of 2023. 20, What's that like with uh, DeMarcus? Oh, it's it's awesome because Demarcus he he's a great teammate, and that's number one. Um, he wasn't just a great player and a Hall of Fame player, but he was a great teammate. But I was always a Cowboy fan as a kid, um, especially during the early '90s when Jimmy Johnson was there and they're winning all the Super Bowls. And I'm from Texas, like I said, and so I uh, I was always a Cowboy fan, even to go there and play out of position. And I played behind DeMarcus, and DeMarcus made all the plays, so I was very comfortable, man, you know. But uh, but he, he is such a, a playmaker. I'm happy to go in with him because he's another guy that has great character, man. I love that guy, and I'm so happy for him. That's amazing. And then um, another question I want to ask here, and I, I think this is hopefully a thought-provoking question. It makes you really think. You've accomplished so much, you know, throughout your career, state champion in high school, all American playing at Texas Tech, you know, Pro Bowls and all pros in the NFL. Now you're a pro football Hall of Fame. But for Zach Thomas, and, and I hope their students see this, you know, think about goal setting. 
Is there something you haven't accomplished yet? Something that you still want to do? Something that helps you wake up in the morning and, and gets you excited and motivated? What is that out there for you uh, at this point in your life, Zach? Well, right now, there is. I mean, you have to keep setting goals. You got to have purpose to get up. You know, I'm, I'm a, I still have my structure uh, that I've had since a little kid, man. And, and, and it's a routine that I've made as a habit. I, this morning, I got my kids up, got them breakfast, got a workout in, got to get a workout every day. It's that structure and to, to have goals. And you always got to keep setting goals. And my goal right now, Nathan, is, is to be the best dad I can be for my kids to try to help them and guide them like my parents guided me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm so grateful for that. You know, so that that is definitely one of the goals that 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 I have right now, and and uh, it's challenging. It's challenging. They don't they don't listen as much as I, I want them to, but uh, but I want to help them make their life a little easier because uh, you know uh, my parents did the same for me. No, that's great, and you know we're getting here close, so I'm gonna kind of jump to a portion uh, that we have rapid fire. Rapid fire questions coming at you quickly, uh, short answers as, as much as possible. So nothing too hard hitting. So it should be easy for you here. Uh, question number one, Zach, playing in a dome or playing outside? Outside. All right. Best road environment to play in? Buffalo. You're out there. You're a captain. Heads or tails on the coin toss? Tails. Heads is always a heavier side. Pre-game meal that you had before games uh, while you're playing in the NFL? Even for breakfast, salmon and rice. If you didn't play linebacker, I think I know where you're going to go here. What position would you have played? Fullback, running back. All right. Best football nickname ever? Buckethead. <laughs> I don't know. Favorite sports movie? Oh, good one. Oh, man. Uh, I can't say. Um, too many, I, too many to choose from there. Too many. Uh, who was your football hero growing up? Oh, man. Junior Seau. Mm. Hall of Famer. He was, you know, I know he's saying to be short, but there's nothing short you can say about Junior. So. I don't know if you want me to talk on him or what. No, go ahead. I actually, I think that I like this. Go ahead. Tell us a little you, you bit about why you looked up the junior Seau. In college, I, I got a signed poster from him, and I always liked how intense he was. And, and he went, you know, when he went to the facility on and off the field, he had great energy, very encouraging, brought good energy into the games and just loved the game so much, man. I love that guy. I miss him. And um, But he was a, a hero uh mine and and he got i got to play with him for three years which was awesome man side by side yeah no doubt a lot of people remember junior say with with the chargers but i was going to say i thought he crossed paths with you in miami so that that's got to be some special memories for you getting to play with your hero and uh i got a, i got a kind of tough question because you played with several hall of famers you know uh junior say jason taylor and others demarcus ware um but for a guy you didn't play with, is there a Hall of Famer you never got to play with that if you could choose anybody, any era that you could have played with, who's that Hall of Famer that you're like, it would have been cool to be on the same team as this guy? Ooh, I, I would say, man, I would say Mike Singletary. Mm, would, another linebacker. Well, I, but the thing is, I, I don't know if I should say that because I might be uh, backing him up right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know. Uh, but I, I I played with a lot of Hall of Fame, like you said, even Dan Marino, man, what a mm -hmm. legend, man! That guy was awesome. So, but good question. Yeah. So last one, and this isn't rapid fire. Just came in from our students. They say it's an avid Dolphins fan, so I got to get it in here before we yeah. we finish the program. They want to know um, what's your favorite part, Zach, uh, of helping in the community. You know, they think of players, they're playing. But so many guys find ways to give back. So what are some ways you gave back and, and why was that important to you, giving back to the community? Well, it's always important to give back to the community. Just like I said, 
people remember, they don't remember all these awards that you made and all that if you're not a good person. And, and helping out is being good for the community. You know, in the past, I've been very active with the USO tours, things like that for our military. Uh, some of those, I get more out of them than the troops get when you go visit them. And so, you know, any, any part of community to help people out, because they'll be there to help you out when you need it, because everybody has their tough times. And so for me, uh, being part of the community is, is, is very uh, heartwarming and, uh, and definitely uh, uh, great to be part of. Awesome. Thank you for that. And I want to thank you for being a part of the program today. Hopefully all of our students that, you know, we're interacting, that we're watching uh, both on Zoom and on YouTube, we're able to take something from it. Uh, so, Zach, thank you again for taking some time out of your day to be on the program. Hey, thank you, Nathan. Appreciate it. Good luck to everybody. Yeah. So thank you. And guys, with that, we're going to wrap up this installment of the Heart of a Hall of Famer a series connected by Extreme Networks. Uh, with class of 2023 Hall of Famer, Mr. Zach Thomas. So once again, thank you for being on the program and thank you for everything you've done uh, for the game of football and for us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Thanks. All right. Yeah, th thank you, students. And I just want to remind Go our Dolphins. teachers, I want to remind our teachers and I want to remind uh, those viewing online, we will have one more of these programs uh, to kind of finish out the school year on April 25th. Uh, with Hall of Famer uh, offensive lineman Will Shields uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs. It'll kind of be the week of the NFL draft taking place in Kansas City. So if you're interested in participating in that, uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact us here at the Hall of Fame at education at profootballhof.com. Uh, we would love to have you guys be a part of that program with Mr. Shields. But thank you again to our teachers, our students, and uh, most importantly, thank you, Zach, for being a part of the program. And we'll hope uh, to see everybody at a future program. So thank you and, and goodbye.